Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Plate Stack Chat with me, Jason, joined by Sam Laroche, as usual. Unfortunately, once again, Tom had better things to do, uh, food-related things, I believe. But we've got a special guest with us around the Plate Stack this week. Now, you may have heard him mentioned on multiple podcasts and YouTube channels. I don't hear the mentions him all the time. I've mentioned him. Savan gives him tasks to do during the podcast. Quite often you hear him told to search something. I know he's worked with Brian Friend. So all of these people love him, yet no one wants to hear from him. So oh. we thought, let's change that. Let's get him on. Very let's good. People hear his voice. So we have Mike Halpin with us today. Mike, welcome yeah. to the podcast. Thanks, guys. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, I know you even mentioned that I I was talking about joining on July 4th and said that might not be the day for the guy with the American flag background to um, it, it would have it would have been <laughs> fine. Join a British podcast. We'd, we'd uh, have been all right with it. Unify. That's what yeah. CrossFit is all about. Oh. Is, is that it? what CrossFit is all is about? It? <laughs> <laughs> Money. Money. That's what CrossFit's all about. Um, yeah. He's going to get the biggest slice of the pie. Yeah, yeah. Is what, no, is what the cross, apparently the CrossFit games made. Yeah, oh, I've been thinking. I've been, oh, I've been like thinking about that all day, basically about the. I've been trying to kind of put together a concept in my mind about the professional, like the idea that kind of when you hear people talk about CrossFit becoming professional and the professionalization of CrossFit, and it, it's always a statement about like, oh, we want the athletes to be able to make more money, but it's still like or we want them to be able to make more money through sponsorship or through kind of all, all the things they do now, but just at a bigger scale. And you're like, that's not professionalization of a sport, like professionalization of a sport. We're talking about, you know, governing bodies, organizations are organizing transportation, um, funds for when somebody gets injured so that that person can kind of, you know, get the help they need and not, you know, if this is their, you know, their bread and butter and the only way they're paying for things. So I've been been thinking about all of this and just trying to work out how do you put this into a a 10 to 15 minute video, to be honest. But um that's uh yeah. Very interesting. Anyway, side side point there. Um well guys, uh I, I know we've talked we've put I think the title is something like News Noble and, and Tinfoil Hats. Um so I love the I'm, last one. I'm, yeah. I'm expecting some nice conspiracy theories to arrive at certain points. Um, but uh, f- first of all, any, any interesting news that you've seen this week come out from CrossFit? I've, I've seen like one thing actually from CrossFit games on their news oh. section, which... Um, they seem to just put stuff on that news site with just no pomp and circumstances at all and just expect us yeah. and morning chalk up and others to just go and actually give it any airtime yeah um Refresh. i haven't been on there today okay. but no well there's the last thing went up on july 15th oh um, okay yeah and, and it was after it was after one two three four i think four in a row that were drug test updates <laughs> so oh i mean talk about timing we we ended like monday we spoke about last monday we spoke oh, a bit about we spoke a bit about oh yeah it seems like there's been a there's been an, another positive test unbelievable <laughs> and then we bang we bang, end, bang 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 run it back <laughs> yeah so um but uh yeah so the thing they have announced is rp strength are now the official nutrition coaching mm. platform of the noble crossfit games So this is another thing I've been thinking about, guys. So sometimes I like to view these as just me throwing out ideas and seeing what people think and if I'm insane. And if I'm not insane, maybe there's a video there. It. But I find it, you know, when you talk of like the separation of the sport and methodology, I feel like that's already actually happened. Not officially, but that has happened. Or the split. Yeah. And that somehow... And actually, Mike, off pod, I've got to ask you a question. <laughs> some, 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 <laughs> oh, stats, wow. okay. some stats I know you have that okay. I, I might need to ask you about. Um, but I've noticed, but you know, like how they were doing the thing of like uh, podium finishes getting an L1 or an L2. Mm-hmm. 
and mm -hmm. then things like having you know like the the official nutritional sponsor and and all of this kind of thing and it's kind of mm -hmm. like you're like crossfit are desperately trying to to like remarry the two things together yeah even though actually the top end athletes are kind of oh so tyler's oh, in the tyler's oh, in the mix wow. right now and tyler's popping up in the comments hey tyler Tyler's nice guy. to see you nice to hear from you he's saying i'm gonna be honest i'm not certain how but even knows how addition works <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. why they don't be on the podcast like that guy mm. um yeah yeah so yeah I, I just feel like maybe maybe crossfit are like trying to kind of as much as possible reintegrate the two things together mm -hmm. by sort of getting you know you you want to be able to say like oh all the podium athletes at the games they've all got their l1 whereas historically they haven't like they they generally don't i mean and most of them are maybe not even really training kind of crossfit as as others do oh well that's a whole uh, and, and, conversation where he does well exactly he does CrossFit. so yeah. yeah so it's an interesting because we talk about like the split and like you know the idea of the difference between the sport of crossfit the methodology of crossfit but i i, it, I just always find it funny when i start seeing like you know we're going to have the official nutritional sponsor of the games and you're kind of like really because i'm pretty sure the diets that like you see like the stuff you see games athletes oh. eating with the amount of the amount of training they're doing and the calories they're burning and how much they're then mm -hmm. you know refueling <laughs> it's sort of it's not well yeah i think the, uh the games I think Savan got a little uh, whatever about this is that the games put out Daniel Brandon saying that she wanted, she ate a bunch of oatmeal and carbs to get fueled up for winning, um, winning an event or winning, winning her semifinal. And it was like, Oh, that's not the methodology anymore. And CrossFit was championing and not just like Daniel Brandon or everybody. Yeah. Well, there we go. So, just another of the weird. Yeah, I, mean, I had she, a bit too much time on my hands. She wasn't today. eating meat, eating meat, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Some fruit, little stuff, no sugar, though. No. That, that, mm. Not yeah. doing that anymore, no. 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 But yeah, hey, so at least she's got a noble T-shirt. So. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on that. Oh, well, we are going to talk about that, but yeah, I have much, um, much <laughs> talk of this. Yeah. I didn't even How quickly do you want to go off the deep end here? Oh, oh I mean, it, it's a hot day. I'm ready to jump into the deep end like immediately, here to be too. honest. Here um, too. Yeah, I, I, I guess I should just for you know for for politeness check with Sam how he's doing. Sam, how you doing, man? I, I see you've been busy at the weekend again, running yeah. around screaming at people. So uh, yeah, it uh, did rep it out this weekend. Which, if you want to be technical, that one wasn't a CrossFit licensed event, if we're going to be ultimately technical, because the finals, so that was a qualifier. Well, it, it was a standalone event, but the first, the person who podiumed got a ticket to the quali to the final of the Rep It Out, which is a CrossFit license. Mm. Right. Um, one of the graft events. But it was, uh, so technically it was a functional fitness event, if we're going to go there. But... Um, yeah, it was really fun. Great atmosphere. Uh, it was a much smaller, much smaller, more intimate event than uh, the big one, uh, which I, I really loved. Nice. Um, okay. Good. Yeah, just, just me running around screaming at athletes. Yeah. We ran five minutes late. Oh. I was a bit, I was a bit annoyed. We did run Thank five you. minutes late, and and I'll be honest, it was entirely my fault. Um, I don't know if you know, Mike, but in the UK currently, it's like hotter than it's ever been in the world ever. It what well, hotter than it's ever been in the UK ever certainly. Do you get, um, I was hearing news articles about how people don't have AC over there. And oh, no. It's like you no. would have to check in on your grandparents or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we yeah. roast in the summer and freeze in the winter. That's basically how it all works here. Oh, no. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back <laughs> on that. Because I, I'll tell you what, at least in the winter, you can heat your house. Because the thing I... So I found... If you can <laughs> afford it. You can well, that's house, right, yeah. That well, yeah, that's true. But I think at least houses here are built generally in a way that retains heat. Yeah. And when I lived in Italy, that was very much not the case. And the problem that I found is that it, it was basically the reverse of what we do in England. Whereas in England, we're like, it's never hot. We don't need AC. And then every summer, you're like, oh, do you know, actually, it does get quite hot, especially on 
like public transportation in shops and places like that maybe mm. ac would have been a good investment in some of these you know some of these places and in italy it's the opposite problem where they're like hey, it's sunny all the time guys we don't really need houses that retain the heat and then every winter snow and i was absolutely freezing and trying to heat my sort of single paned house with like old wooden windows that just let all the cold air and snow in so um i i find that the winter very comfortable here but the summer is terrible yeah it's it's um, we're not made for it well I, I was living my best life right because the, the reason we were five minutes late is because i was sitting in the air-conditioned canteen just <laughs> eating my uh eat my chicken and halloumi wrap and they were like um sam we we're gonna we must start again i was like oh oh yeah we've got a competition downstairs yeah probably do that um, so yeah, that was that was completely my fault. Um, you should have just don't... asked. You could have had like a little monitor, and you could have just yeah. uh, done it from the tent. Just do it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. Be... End it. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Nice. That's me. I'm good. I'm really right. hot. But I'm... Okay. So we've we've filled enough. Now we can go full deep end. So full deep Mike, end. come on. What 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 have you been holding back? <laughs> oh well, you did promote my post, which I got some responses about that. How I I was wearing a tinfoil hat and thought about it <laughs> way too much with the whole noble just picking athletes that already have other sponsors. Um, those happen to also be the most popular athletes, if you want to just say it that way. But um, well, but see, yeah, they they are. But that's they that's are they why. Are. Well, yeah, the most popular athletes. If you were only aware of the games. And you live in the United States. Maybe we'll say that. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's not enough that you guys get 15 spots mm -hmm. for men and women to the games. You've also got to only get their T-shirts as well. This is uh, it's outrageous. They know their... You could say they know their market fairly well. Um, but it's a little bit of a crack at BKG and Car Saunders and... A like, few others where it's I like... mean, B BK like so. I've been, I've been a big BKG fan for a long time. In fact, that was my when we were talking about going to semifinals and stuff. That was like when I heard BKG was going to Lowlands. For me, that was like, oh no! Like if there had been one athlete I actually wanted to really see, it was BKG. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, I got Toriago's daughter, so I was very happy with that. We all know I was happy about that, but I would have loved to see BKG there as well. Um. So I I know that maybe I really like him and I've all, and I'm always kind of championing him as somebody super consistent and really good and and all of that. But I get that maybe not everyone is on board with me in in that camp because he doesn't necessarily have these like standout performances that some other athletes have. But Kara Saunders I think is insanely popular. Like I think people yeah. love her. So that's a much bigger surprise to me that she didn't get a shirt um so you know yeah and you almost think like uh again tinfoil hat here like yes. well they have an australian athlete already she's yeah. pretty popular in and of herself so yeah, lives in the u.s they need another really. australian to to span that gap they got some canadians and some obvious americans and but not yeah. really much in Europe. Go, uh, Sam kept asking for a Roy Stun shirt, and they're like, he's I've not made... needed for the games. He's gone, I don't care. Don't <laughs> care. Don't <laughs> I care. The... Can I get the Roy Stun multiverse t shirt, please? Yeah. Yeah, right. In my, in my universe, Roy Stun has been to the games, and he will be in the games forever. <laughs> yeah. I don't even care. Do you want, should we go through? I've got a list. I, I've been through and made a list of notable people who don't have a t shirt. Okay. So right. we've got we've got no daughters apart from Thura's daughter. Uh, well, but she doesn't have one because it's her actual team that have it. The record. Oh, Annie. So she doesn't oh, Annie. technically. Yeah. She, Annie doesn't have one. So there's yeah. no there's no. Um, but Toya, Toya daughter. Toya on that team is a noble athlete. They're they're, they're a noble team. Oh, they're a noble team. I believe. I believe. Well, they're all we're noble, so I mm -hmm. assume so. Mm. Um. Oh, no, McQuaid. Let, let's just put a, a pin in. Talking about teams, we'll come okay. back to that. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> McQuaid, my other big thought of the day. <laughs> in the for the women, McQuaid, Dahlstrom, who won uh, strength and depth, Barnhart, mm. Spiegel. Um, I rubbed so bad at saying names. Mm. I actually prepared this. Mahay, Mikhail Shin, Mikhail Shin, Cindy McLishan, 
McClishan, that's it. She came, she came, she came above Brooke Wells, didn't she? In her, yeah, yeah, yeah Brooke Wells only mat. is that in the mat? Brooke, mm-hmm. Yeah, Brooke Wells only like snuck in. And, yeah, and she came higher than Wells and yeah. Rail in the mat. Uh, Saunders, Megala, Freyova, Semenza, and Raptis. Just like they're they're all top three in in every in all the competition generally. And then on yeah. the men's, you've got no Adler, Caron, Mayer. I know you'll be cheesed off about this, Chase. No Mertens. Uh, he's, a, he's a topic within himself. Yeah. yeah. Krenikov hasn't, you know, he's qualified yeah. for the games multiple years. You'd, you'd assume they're going to have at least one Krenikov t-shirt. You'd have they can't to put imagine. a country on that t-shirt, but yeah. Ooh, that is interesting. <laughs> that is, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, Pepper, yeah. Sega. That, they're surely they're losing oh, out he's something there. Oh, Sega didn't get one, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I just think he's got a big following. He's been at the games multiple oh. years. Like I think they're missing out there. Um, Gerard. Yeah, that uh, that is a surprise to me. I, I I think that would be a real like. Um, I don't know. I, I, really, I could a, see... a welcome back. Sort of well, thing. I know I could kind I kind of could see certain people being like, yeah, I'm going to get a Ricky Gerard one. Like because because yeah, uh, yeah. also we have to remember that none of this has to do with the athletes. No, this is all. This is all about how much money Noble can yeah, make. Yeah, this is a corporate theater. corporate yeah. decisions. Right? And I definitely We're... think you know, like you're going to have yeah. people that want to buy the Batman T-shirt, and you're going to have the other people that really want like the Joker T-shirt. And I kind of feel like you surely someone's going to want like the Ricky Garrard. And I mean, imagine if he popped a second time. <laughs> You'd want that. You'd want that shirt. Collector's <laughs> item, man. Yeah. Uh, they announced the additional three each, right? They put no. that out over the weekend. And also that I find like fascinating that you can just be so, and we're going to do an additional three men and additional three women when actually potentially the caliber of athletes in each field, you're going to have more household names or more popularity in one side or the other. So it seems, you know, an interesting kind of, on the one hand, you're being very calculated as to we want to just have the ones we're going to sell the most shirts of. And then on the mm-hmm. other side, it's like, but we're also going to have to be super fair and equal and make sure we've got the same number on each side. And you, and you kind of want to chalk it up to like, I mean, I, it seems like the 15 that they picked. Well, Sam Dancer seemed like he's a noble athlete and yeah. they threw something to him, but he's great. I'm not going to argue that, but, um, but, there's a couple noble athletes that's like, if they weren't noble athletes, would they get a shirt? Um, Name names. <laughs> there's 16. <laughs> there's 16, aren't there? Uh, well, there's from what I heard, I think it's Emma Lawson. They had to reprint it because it had the wrong, it had some, something was wrong on the shirt. I think it was Emma Lawson. <laughs> Only in um, but, so um, of, the, of all of those, yeah. though, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are noble athletes. Yeah, mostly the women. Yeah, was interesting. there are five women who are noble athletes. Mm. And then you've got Horvath, mm. who's rad, Adams, which is Reebok, Brandon is rad, and then Lawson is wit. But I don't quite understand that wit. Well, she seems to be a wit, have a wit affiliation. Yeah, well, that was really, that was instagram at best me trying to figure out where some of these athletes are because daniel brandon is rad through and through but rad hasn't really promoted much of their deal with war horvat and then like they some have, of them they have, they have reebok shoes but they have like uh what is it tire is it actually pronounced tire or tier yeah, yeah tire yeah, yeah. Okay. um tier they have then it's norse tier. Um, germanic god Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> just that wasn't uh, done in uh, United well, States. Well, Velna's uh, Velna's with Tears, but, um, yeah, yeah. Velna Olsen's is with Olsen's with Jim Shark. I know. I know. Like, come on, Olsen man. Also, was on a Morning Shark article about being a, a tier athlete, and then also, I swear, I saw him in a video with rad shoes on. So he's an enigma. Um, but well, Jim Shark uh, don't make shoes, do they? So, yeah, and right. t- and Tia make sunglasses. So you could technically, I guess, be sponsored by like Reebok, for example, yeah. and Tia, 
and something else. So like that Brad don't make, make lifters, yourself. so they're going to have to wear lifters. So then like, are they going to have, mm. I don't know, Adidas lifters, for example, they might, you know, if they well, don't want to go. want to wear wanna... Reebok lifters. Yeah, especially if you've you got a really good yeah. uh, one rep max on something. You definitely <laughs> yeah. want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but, it, it, um, it's interesting that someone okay, like Danny Spiegel. I don't think. Thing. Let's let's get the numbers up on this video. I don't think Bailey Rail, and this is not controversial. I don't think Bailey Rail gets a shirt if she's not a noble athlete. And then I I'm not too I'm a little surprised that they are not doing like well, what what do they do over there? But Michael Jordan still getting a jersey every year. They like switch between who makes the jerseys over here, but Michael Jordan seemingly still gets one. And they just reprint it because people will buy a Jordan jersey. Wow. Well, I could see people buying a Matt Fraser jersey or a Rich Froning jersey, although he has his team one coming out, yeah. and then a um, a David's daughter jersey and some other big names, uh, Sam Briggs or somebody like that. They're not here, but if it's got your country listed on it and they're the biggest athlete from your country, then why not just? I think the it point up? though, the, the point though is. Well, why is there not a print your own name jersey? Well, yeah. <laughs> it. They can I do mean, it on shoes like surely they can do it on a t-shirt. Do they? Do they do it on shoes though? Because they. they can't, lack, don't, like, Noble, shoes? Noble don't do it on shoes, but Nike okay. and Reebok do. So it's it's yeah. possible to do it on a shoe. Therefore, it must be possible to do it on a t-shirt. Yeah. But if they printed all the Emma Lawson ones wrong, I mean, yeah. Oh, can you imagine him trying to sell Croxon? Oh, <laughs> be a nightmare. <laughs> or, or La Roche. I was going to say, driving La Roche. Is you... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. And, th and then um, it, it's it's funny because I, I did that video on it and like got some people. And, you know, it's funny hearing some people being like, oh, you know, yeah, man, I, what a cash grab. Can't believe they did this kind of thing. And then other people being like, uh, and this is where that kind of the professionalization of the sport topic has been swirling around in my brain a little bit because people are like oh but look at football look at rugby look at you know other sports they all you know the the cost of the jerseys are always you know so high that's part of professional sport and i'm like yeah it is but there's a you know there's quite a big difference between like also the shirts for these teams that have sponsors and yes it's true that you know maybe the players aren't getting a cut but the team is getting money from that so and then the team the, pays the players so yeah it, like, there is that, things. that's fully the argument for that like but the then also idea. my my issue is like if you had come out and said if noble had come out and said right this year at the games 65 dollars, and you can buy a noble games shirt with the name of your favorite athlete on it oh and we're going to give them $20 for every shirt we sell. Mm -hmm. Fine. No problem. But what they said was, we listened to the community. <laughs> the community were not happy that last year we were selling shirts with people's names on it. So this year, we're going to give $20 of each sale. To... So people are thinking, oh, it's the same as last year then. And and this is the thing I'm thinking, well, why? Because somebody also commented on my video, like, well, why would you expect the named one to be the same as the one without a name? And that's not the issue. The issue is it's the exact same shirt as last year with the name, but at $27 more. So you can give $20 to your athletes and not even all of them, just a select few. The ones that we think will sell. Yeah. Plus the, the fan voted ones that we'll get in a day or two. Um, but uh, yeah, like, and then, I mean, comparatively jerseys are, any of that they're not usually just t-shirts with yeah. screen printing on them they're actual like well there's varieties in the nfl where there's yeah. like the the cheapest one to like the on field one but like it's not just like a and i would I've heard also... nobel or shirts are nice but I, I wouldn't imagine they're that nice. well i would would also say that you think like if you if you're you're buying a team jersey that's like an investment for the year right because you're hmm. like Oh, this is the jersey they're going to wear through the season. So I'm going to yeah. see my favorite player wearing that multiple times throughout the season. And if I go to an event live, or if I go to a you know a bar to watch it, or whatever, I can you know I've got this opportunity. Whereas if you've got like a games shirt, 
and you're going to be like, I'm going to wear that for the long weekend when I watch the CrossFit games. And then I'll wear it to do a couple of workouts and it's pretty hot. And so then two minutes into the workout, I'm popping the top anyway. <laughs> at least two of those shirts are now wrong by the time you wear them the next Monday after the game. Because right now, Tia's has five uh, oh, yeah. number ones on it. They're, I wouldn't put past the marketing folks to put a six number one on there. They should just give you like a little Try iron on one yeah. that you can do it yourself. <laughs> or just do the whole thing as iron on and then just yeah. sell the letters. Just fill in by the country, yeah. fill in the name, and there yeah, you go. Build your, you have like a builder bear, just be like a builder shirt. And you just go yeah. in and you pick a few letters and you stick them on and yeah. So just to just to throw just We're to throw a little something out for you, oh, just dear. to throw a little something out for you, a West. So I, I was as a kid, I was made to support West Ham United, who are a football team in the UK. I yeah, love it. Football I, team in England, as a kid, right? I was forced against. My I, I, I was. I, we'll get who I, I was. I, couldn't, I can't here. change. I can't. You, unlike some people who like normally they support like Chelsea or Man City or Liverpool, depending, on, and the, and they you know. They were Man City fans who were then Liverpool fans who were then Chelsea fans who were then Liverpool. That I would, I'm not that. I, no. I support West Ham from afar. I don't sort of. I have to. Okay. Um, but a West Ham shirt, a current, the, the next season's football shirt, 22, 23, will be sixty five pounds. So that is the same price, okay. give or take, as a Noble CrossFit Games T-shirt, right? There are 38 games in the season for uh, a football, a, a proper football team. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I dig. Um, which makes it £1.71 per game. If you're working it out as a per game, if you went to the, technically, if you went to the par board, to the pit, every, every time you wear that, it would be £1.71. Obviously, you can wear it more than that if you wish. But whereas the, the Noble CrossFit games, you buy it now, you wear it for, Five days, it works out as like seventeen pound a day if you want to support your athlete every single day of the CrossFit game. Like it, you know, you could. It's the same. Yeah. There, those T-shirts are the same price as a pair of Noble sliders. Yeah. So I've just got and looked yeah. up how much a uh, a Grid League T-shirt is. Go on. <laughs> yeah, twenty five ninety nine, <laughs> and then you can support your favorite Grid League team throughout the season. But is it a noble grid league t-shirt? I mean, no, I've got, I've, I've got a noble. Depend, got, it will depend on the team, won't it? I'm, I'm. Well, the, the this noble hat, if you bought it, would be twenty five pounds. Yeah, I didn't buy it. I was fortunately given it. I, didn't uh, I just bring it up because because it's my new thing is to just constantly reference grid league now as much as I can, just to to drive that wedge between myself and others. <laughs> Maybe someday though. But uh, yeah, so I'm a Cincinnati home and grown uh, fan. So um, we had the Bengals in the Super Bowl, so which is big for us. Uh, they hadn't been there since the 90s. Um, so same sort of thing. Immediately before the Super Bowl, all of a sudden, everybody's a Cincinnati fan. We don't mind that <laughs> so much. But um, the jerseys go from one price to another price because they say – that you're at the Super Bowl on them. So that that's the closest thing to this is it just saying 2022 CrossFit games on it. Immediately that's that's got to be priced higher than a shirt without that or a shirt with somebody's name on it or or whatever else. Like you can get a Joe um, Joe Burrow in black mm -hmm. Super Bowl this year's Super Bowl for 134 pounds. The non Super Bowl yeah. and they lost. is sixty four so, pounds. The Rams ones are probably still more expensive. But yeah, that's just Ooh. my sadness there. Um, Sorry for you to have to look at now. this. Oh boy, Tyler Watkins jumping in again. So I tried to get the owner of Grid to coordinate with me to make custom jerseys for teams that what a loser. He wanted to charge me seventy five dollars for blanks. Oof. <laughs> oh, that's though. I have heard he hates Z scores. So he's probably just um... <laughs> double charging double <laughs> triple triple for a Z scorer. Oh. Yeah, no, there you I, go. I was, I, that's not where I thought that comment was going. I thought Grid League might want to use Z score. I don't know what they do over there. Is it all? 
I've watched only clips of people doing some wild well, stuff. Th- their, their scoring system is um, you, they basically have the event. You go. The winner gets two points. If you finish, you get one point. And if you don't finish, you don't get any points. So basically, it, it's that's... so that's how they keep it very close race for each kind of thing. Wow. If only. Where yeah. would Tia be? I'll have to run uh, those numbers. Well, um, well, just just do two points times <laughs> what fifteen events, whatever it's going to be. And that's how many. You'd be on thirty <laughs> points, wouldn't you? There we go. <laughs> That'd be really. That's an interesting way of scoring, though, because yeah. it, imagine they actually did that other game. Because imagine t- if you t- win, t- you get a every point. Event, though, did she? Yeah. But look, the last well, game. Well, won, yeah. No. She won what ten or fourteen or something, which actually would she only won. put her like. Six point eight points ahead. Yeah, forget the numbers lot, that I ran, but getting... she went she went wire to wire. I mean, it helps that the first event was a swim kayak event, but um, she went. She was never not in first place all of all yeah. of twenty twenty one. So, uh, which I mean, again, only podcast I've ever been on, so I can just make up whatever I want us to talk about. the The movie that came out. Um, I just have feelings about everything, but um, how do you not call out the fact that nobody's done that before? But well, there's next gen folks. So. Yeah, because it was <laughs> I'm about trying to get you as many gen. as you can. is not day. the Mark next gen, is she? That... Off, uh... <laughs> She's not next gen. I have no allegiances. Yeah, um, Tia's not next gen, so she wasn't even in the movie, was she? <laughs> Did she? Uh, she was in the very beginning to explain the fact that she is a professional athlete and actually cares about what she does, but. But is she a professional um, athlete though? Um, uh, she is in weightlifting. Yeah, because there's a governing oh, body. Well, governing body. Are we getting that. into that? There's no CrossFitters with this. I don't know where you're going. Like, of course she is. She's the sponsored. She gets paid to do that thing. Oh, that's a great question. I I had this. This was part of my thought about the professionalism of the sport. Like, what makes a professional athlete? Is it that they get paid to just do that sport? Is it as soon as you're you're being paid just to do? Basically, as soon as you don't have to do anything else apart from your sport or all the money you get comes from your sport, does that make you a professional athlete? Because this was on the back of um, a comment. So I listened to, I don't know if anyone listened to the CrossFit Games podcast about PEDs um, and drugs tests. Mm-hmm. So I, I listened to that. And and I, and I and it very much like when I listened to the one about, um, I can't remember even what it was about now with Bosman. I think it was like quarterfinals or something. And all I took away from that was everything he'd mentioned about the games and then went and made a video about the games. He like just with did this. one with them um, a couple of days ago. We're talking elite fitness. Possibly. Yeah. Well, well on, on this one, there was a couple of comments and there was one thing and it was about the, you know, um, athletes kind of knowing what they're putting in their bodies and things like that. And there was this statement about the difference of like those that are professional athletes that are at the games. And then those that are kind of amateurs playing at a professional level. I think was maybe the statement there. So like, you know, you kind of, you're who made that statement. <sighs> who did make Somebody that statement? Somebody at CrossFit made that statement. I think it was probably Chase. That oh, made that okay. statement. Well, Chase can say whatever he wants. Yeah. Um, uh, and okay. I just thought that was interesting wow. because I, because I think there is, and, and referencing it to like the drugs tests and that it was the idea of like, if you're a professional athlete, because actually somebody had, somebody had messaged me whose job is basically going around speaking to athletes to give information about you know knowing what they're taking in in into their body and how you can be sure that what you're taking is would not be in a, a banned substance and all of that and educating people within sport bec- and and they're paid to do this because other sports that are professional sports have these kind of people they don't just put it out in an email so mm-hmm. you know there we go um but th- they were saying to me like you know if you get if you go to the doctor and the doctor sort of like, oh, you know, this is your problem here. You should take this. You're probably going to ask like, are there any side effects? No. Okay. I'll go and take this. Right. And that's sort of as far as your reasoning goes. Whereas if you're a, a professional athlete, you, a PED? you'd have a lot of follow-up <laughs> questions. There are yeah. not a lot of professional sports. According to Wikipedia. <laughs> there are no. not a lot of professional sports. Was that your... Yeah, there are. Well, Wikipedia. So obviously, there are some that are broken down. So, for example, Q, Q sports, the sports played with a Q. So there are obviously lots of different 
sport, Q sports, which are professional. But they're, according to Wikipedia, and now obviously they're not the be all and end all of whatever. Um, there are 31, 31 of like sports ranging from boxing to curling to Q sports to esports. The ice hockey, there you go. That's uh, the rodeo, or ball riding, there. surfing, team handball, <laughs> ultimate frisbee. Wow, frisbee golf is Brian friend of professional? He's a, he's a professional athlete, know. yeah. Didn't you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm in the realm of uh, thinking that uh, if you get paid to do it, it's your profession. Yeah. Now that statement can go a lot of ways, but uh, in the sports world, if you get paid to do this, I mean, there's. there's I would insta- I would argue they're semi. I would argue they're semi professional. Just work out and aren't aren't CrossFitters, but they just yeah. get paid to post about their workouts. Um, well, isn't that but... also how most CrossFitters get paid? <laughs> oh, it, I, I would argue yeah. that they're semi professional. Yeah, at best. Okay. Yeah. Because they're, well, they're like you'd have semi professional football player, like in, in England, mm-hmm. we'd have or semi professional rugby players. So they would have a job and then they would play rugby mm-hmm. and train a rugby. So they get paid to train and they get paid to play. They don't get paid a fortune. And let's be honest, most of the guys that go to the games aren't getting paid a fortune. Well, uh, what I think is to, to, to back up maybe your argument a little bit there. So I'm not going to push back on this one, Sam. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to bring oh. it in and I'm going to say, I think you might be right. And what I think is you're going to see two types of semi-pro athletes within CrossFit. Those that have, those that are semi-professional in that they are like going to the games and then they have a profession that is either generally is within CrossFit, like a coach or a box owner or something like that, or like um, Elisa Fuliano is like a, you know, a media creator for a company. So she's yeah. like, you know, got a kind of your more traditional job. And then the other semi-pro will be games athlete and, you know, and that. And then the other job that they have is more of an influencer as a job, which is obviously a job that didn't exist when other sports were coming up. And when you used to yeah. have your kind of classic weekend warrior football player who worked Monday to Friday in a factory kind of thing. He couldn't have been like Monday to Friday, I'm going to be an influencer. And then at the weekend, I'll play football. <laughs> could try <laughs> yeah or they sell their programming or they are, well that's what, yeah. yeah but that's why i would put on the like coach gym okay. coach yeah. x you know type of um type, type of job they make a living out of this but yeah i could see that it's not winning winning unless you're tia maybe yes. tia is the exception that you could say everyone else isn't making likely a full bring it home for the family sort of living here for doing CrossFit. Unless you're going, unless you're some maybe close to like the PGA or something like that, you're going on the tour and going to every event that you can get to and winning every event that you can go to. And oh, like a lot of, that, that, at that point, you're like, maybe just get a job. Like that wow. sounds like a, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like or, it's take a real or hopefully by then body. you get enough sponsors to, to yeah, give that's you true. spacers and mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the other funny thing is that like they're all they're all selling the same stuff right because it's it's sort of the eyeballs that are on them are the same world. are the same people mm-hmm. isn't it so you know there's only so many different mobility tools you can need or different sleep aids or something to kind of i don't know help you with aid you in recovery yeah, some of so- i don't know like the professional sports side I see is like, it's curious, right? Because like at the basics, you could sort of see a, a scenario where Cincinnati, Ohio has an affiliate and that affiliate is sort of professionalized almost to like, like the not the Bengals level, but just sort of like they are the team of the city. And then you can get behind that and say like, here's the team and then here's the individual athletes that come out of there. So like, I guess the closest you could say is like, CrossFit Mayhem, and they are building professionals there, and they have their own, well, they have multiple teams, but um, they have that where it is a professional known name, and they 
for Cookville, Tennessee, they are they are almost like the biggest professional sport there. So um, I don't know that, but I, that's a guess. But um, unless they have a minor league baseball team, and then it already blows them out of the water. But um, but uh, but with that, you could sort of see that. But instead, you get this like everybody doing it solo sort of thing, where like Tia can go do something, and Pat Bellner can go do something, and like uh, just go down the list of even what you said there, Sam, of, of athletes that, that weren't picked for, for jerseys. And then it's, yeah, everybody's out for themselves. So you don't really need to do any of that. So like they could professionalize it and there's a lot of ways they would go to do that, but it doesn't seem like that's in some of the athletes best interest to say like, let's get our money through CrossFit and through CrossFit giving us, um teams that we then are either individual or team athletes for and then those teams are paid and then those teams pay the individuals well the surely a a a better way to do that would be to have um the equivalent the equivalent of a league right so you you league you league structure it so you have 10 people in the premier the league one the top league Mm -hmm. the i don't know the CE, so let's call it CrossFit Division One, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have CrossFit Division Two, CrossFit Division Three, CrossFit Division Four. Now, all of those divisions can be paid. The top division will obviously get paid more than Division Four, but you have, you then have, okay, well, we've got three people being relegated, three people being brought up, and That'd then every season, right? And then if you're injured, if you're injured, and then they can have rules around injuries. So if you're injured for a length of time, or you, you know, you have to compete. There are, say, there are fifteen competitions a year, and you you have to compete at a minimum of twelve day. So that would mean that if you were injured for more than three months, so no, that that doesn't work, does it? So there were twelve competitions a year, and you have to compete at a minimum of nine, and that which would mean if you were injured for more than three months, you would then be out. You'd essentially be out of the league. That for the rest of that year. And um, I don't know, maybe be automatically and like relegated having, or something. Yeah, I don't and then know. what? New athletes have to just always break in at the bottom. Is that yeah? Because the... this is the problem. Because that's that's the tricky thing, isn't it? With CrossFit, is like you get, especially now with like these young athletes that like just bust in on the scene and are like doing incredibly <laughs> well and finish kind of top top of the. Well, I mean, anyone that's qualified for the games means that they've finished top. <laughs> well. <laughs> Most have qualified for the game <laughs> in the top five at a semi final, and then a few have been promoted after the fact. But, um, like that's impressive, right? That wouldn't be division, mm-hmm. like, that, four, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's impressive yeah. even in Africa and even in South America and even in um Asia and anywhere else. You, I know Brian's talked on this, but like, are you to say that these are the fittest 40 men and women? No, not exactly. There's some. There's some uh, fill-ins from drug issues, and there's some areas where they could North America or, or Europe would beat all of all of the people at Africa and, and other places that that either got in or didn't. But like, yeah, the league structure would need to be somewhere there just to just to stay where the money flows. Because right now, except for winning, there's no money flowing that I'm aware of flowing from CrossFit to the athlete outside of individual sponsorships and winnings. Yeah. But that's what could, that's what I would say is a professional sport. Yeah. But it would be interesting you could still to have how... Oh, sorry. Go for it. No, no, cuz you, you could still have all of your what would be your semi-finals. They're just spread over a longer period of time. So essentially mm-hmm. it's, it's like the Grand Prix, right? You have Grand Prix all around the world of motor racing and those qualify you for yeah and they yeah and they you know well no that's no the sorry the um i mean like motor racing grand prix like f1 so oh, the okay. you, maybe you, you you do have that I'm a bit in, uh, in the, yeah, yeah. A, li- a little bit maybe <laughs> but, but f1 so like Please only use nfl and mlb and okay MLB. let's take um, let's say <laughs> nfl right so nfl they're starting to play those in different areas of the world right so there's Can one in london NASCAR. there's one <laughs> Can we use NASCAR? oh don't use nascar <laughs> but the but the, the point is you can you can still have the events that you've had. You could even have more events that you've had. It, it sort of goes back to that sanctionals 
mm-hmm. yeah. thing whereby okay. you you know and and you can have big competition and arguably they're bigger than any of the semi-finals because the semi-finals were over four weeks whereas if you spread those over like a season and then an off season then you could actually have an off season where people can actually yeah. go train and uh, rest it's and interesting stuff. you address that because that was going to be one of my my points there was going to be i just wonder if you how much of a season can you have if you're expecting people to compete at you know maybe not through their highest level but uh, you know a very high level for a prolonged period of time because already that was a little bit the complaint with like the sanctional season wasn't it that was kind of some people were just like competing as much as they could because they were trying to punch that ticket to the games and they just kept missing out and it's sort of like how how many times can you compete before you just break basically mm. um another, exactly. another interesting question would be how much money does crossfit make off of things like people's image rights you know because obviously they put out sponsored posts as well but the pictures that they're posting are obviously from their events but are of athletes that you know athletes that might be popular enough to get a noble t-shirt for example so they you know you can see when they put stuff up that they're selecting athletes that they know this will trend well this will get a lot of people viewing our content and at the moment athletes give away those those image rights no it's like you can use my image for whatever you want kind of thing whereas maybe there's a discussion to be had there with the pfaa but you know that's um (laughs) Well, and I know we've both talked about. Is my mic all right? Because my headset yeah. died. Okay. Yeah, yeah you. Uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, we both talked about like, I, I seem that we both talked to, to Brent just a little bit at least. Or yeah. I've. Tiny it was bit. only like one email. Um, but uh, I mean, it's great what he's trying to do. He's a very busy guy though, and obviously he has his own goals. Um, but if anything was to professionalize CrossFit, it's some sort of collective bargaining by the athletes yeah well that that's what like that's what i mean this this is another topic actually entirely, <laughs> but really that's what the pfa needs to be able to do because what they what what you do is you get you know <laughs> independently an athlete saying hey you can't use my image means nothing mm-hmm. every athlete saying hey you can't use my image means something right uh same like likewise an athlete saying look i'm not gonna go to this event unless there's certain things in place they'll just say okay well (laughs) see you at the next one then whereas if every athlete is saying no we want to have certain things in place so either you'd need like a, a pfaa or a branch of set up in each country to then have things like we would like there to be a fund of money set up that maybe is being you know receiving money from I don't know whatever it would be like a, a, a portion of open registrations or a portion of of money that you're making from this or from that that is then that then we can at our discretion give to athletes to cover travel costs and medical bills and things like that that have been incurred for CrossFit. So obviously you know they're not paying for their holidays, but somebody qualifies for the games, they can say to the the PFAA, "Look, I want you know this is you know you, they could basically." get all the information could then present it and be like this is my flights this is my hotel this is how much it's going to cost yeah. me and uh, you know i request a maybe not necessarily it's all covered but like a percentage is is paid for something like that but that that's the kind and that's where it goes back to my my thought of what professionalizing the sport should look like versus oh we're just going to get some bigger names in so that the same six athletes can get even bigger sponsors because the problem yeah. with this just like you know some like I know Tom often mentions kind of the idea of getting non-endemic brands in like that's a big thing right so you get your cars and your you know things like that that are coming in and and sponsoring and it's not just another protein powder or recovery tool but the problem here is even if you get these non-endemic brands they're still just giving the money to the same six people so you just create an even bigger gap between those that can do this full time and those that are still having to work or you know or well, and, work on a pig farm in my <laughs> colton i mean he's he's a man of his own uh but like in my short view of crossfit i've only even done crossfit for two to three years 
Um, and yet, so look at his OG setup. Stats. If you're not watching this online, if you're not watching this on YouTube, <laughs> go to YouTube and just look at his background. It's normally like, I've only been doing this. Uh, in my garage, years. by the way, I don't go to an affiliate. So, like, this has been something I've wanted to write about a little bit is what is the 2022 version of CrossFit? And then where where is that going? Because if you look at the athletes, the and this sort of all comes together if you look at the athletes they can just go get their own deals and and similar to influencers that we talked about they don't necessarily have to win the games to do very well selling themselves on instagram to whoever um danny spiegel did not get a jersey but she has likely the biggest one of the biggest followings on um on there with out even completing the CrossFit Games. So, no offense to Danny Spiegel. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but in 2022, I don't even, like the issue that CrossFit is building here, and we talked on the methodology versus the games, I, I, I've been to just a handful of affiliates in my entire time. One, the last one was J.R. Howell's affiliate CrossFit crash um, while I was on vacation. Uh, he's awesome. Um, and I do mayhem programming. The biggest, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> huge tracts of land, if you're aware of Monty Python. Um, <laughs> uh, but, I love uh, that Americans love Monty Python. <laughs> it's our only... It's our only knowledge. It's all just 40 years old comedy. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I do CrossFit Mayhem athlete programming. Um, I go to Rogue's website and I do my own thing. And while I'm interested in getting like an L1 and actually becoming an involved citizen of CrossFit <laughs> or CrossFitter, as some would say, um, most can just do the open in their garage they don't need to ever have somebody look at their form or anything which would be hiller's whole thing um and then they never need to give money to an affiliate they're they're the most money they may spend this month is buying a crossfit jersey oh that's it that's that's, <laughs> oh, that's the you got to because that. yeah sure uh, if you don't, don't pay, pay to do the open and you're not affiliate. paying for your <laughs> for your members for an affiliate, of course you can afford an, a noble yeah. jersey. Buy that, buy a Monster Hydro, and uh, you know, call yeah, it a day. Set them on fire. There you go. So, just sorry, just going back to the the payment stuff, right? So, some NFL players get paid more than other NFL players. Obviously, there's a okay. salary cap, right? So it, it, it's kind of weird in the NFL because there's a salary cap for each team because they. For each team, but not yeah, for yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but there, yeah. So, but that does take into account, mm -hmm. yeah. How if you give all your money came. to one player, yeah. you've got to fill yeah, up yeah. the rest so, of a really bad team. So, so, I was just doing a little bit of looking into this. So, obviously, you're a you're a Bengals fan. Mm -hmm. Um, so Regrettably, Joe Burrow, they, so Joe Burrow, average salary of nine million right per year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot more money in the NFL than there is in CrossFit. But um, some would Matthew, say, but Matthew Stafford of the Rams is like seventy-three million. I mean, that's not what he earned through from the NFL. I can't, I can't. So our guy's still that. on a rookie contract, I think. So there's a but, lot of but, that where they don't pay exactly. But but that's yeah. where you can get. And this is what I'm thinking, right? Because in in like football, soccer over here, some players are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money, and some players are getting paid considerably less ridiculous amounts of money. There's still, there's still a lot of money, but it doesn't mean that you. It, again, it goes back. If we had that those like division systems, you could easily the money could easily flow because you could easily see in revenue how much each division is making, and you could apportion that mm -hmm. in in its own way. You know, you can so you know like the NFL makes X amount. Who watches D one? Well, not many. Yeah. Like. A, a fair few people play college ball, so like who, who that, the first oh, no, a lot of people event. watch college ball here. I wasn't exactly I was that's what, that's what I mean. So college, <laughs> college ball is a yeah. big deal, which is why college it it matters what college you play for, right? Mm -hmm. When you go when you go to college, it matters because 
you want people to be watching you and that will essentially then promote you in the NFL when you'll get to a better team and, and all that stuff. You'll get drafted higher. It's no different in CrossFit. It, it would be no different in CrossFit. You get, you know, if you do well, you get your own T-shirt. Like, it kind of fits that. Or if you're popular, you get your own T-shirt. Now, you don't yeah. have to be the best player in the college team. You just have to be a popular player, right? Yeah. Just Ezekiel, over the arguably, line. But Ezekiel it seems had, like uh, they didn't use that. Maybe because it would, be, it would just be too black and white to say like Danny Spiegel and anybody with more than a million or some amount of Instagram followers gets one. Like obviously everybody would that's right not that. a good but I would say that's not a good metric of, of no, that. Yeah they kind of have popularity choose, right? like yeah, yeah. it's marketable. Well yeah. one thing they'd be able to look at what they sold last year. That's one metric. Because those were of... only noble athletes, right? Did they even I mean they? the two the two winners were noble athletes. Or at least I guess were they at the time? Was Justin a noble athlete? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. But were okay. they the only jerseys they did? I thought they had a few. Others. No, but they did Brooke and they did Katrin and they did a few others. But the only ones I ever saw were noble athletes. And like okay. that's even been a, a statement that somebody made. Maybe Hiller or somebody was like, if they just said, "Screw you guys, we're going to sell noble athletes," and if Reebok or Tier wants to create something, we're not going to let them. First of all, but. If they wanted to, they can go yeah. sell a shirt that says Velner on it. Yeah, yeah. well, the, there's no reason that I couldn't <laughs> make my own La Roche apparel. Yeah, but there's no reason I can't make my own La Roche apparel t-shirts with their name on it, where they train, and what country they're from. There's nothing yeah. that there's Long nothing on. It, doesn't yeah. say the word CrossFit on it. Oh, uh, you might get your cease and desist from. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as long as it doesn't look too closely to the real thing, uh, you might be okay. Yeah, that's. Well, I mean, if, if it didn't have the badge, if it didn't have the noble CrossFit Games thing on it, there'd be no reason. It's, you could have the same type. Well, no, because like literally the the t-shirt that Mike's got on, the no rep t-shirt, is the one that Noble sent a cease and desist order to vindicate to tell them that they weren't allowed to produce anymore because it looks too similar to the noble it's logo. Really, the R, I think the yeah. R gives it away. Yeah. It looks a bit like a. I mean, if yeah, they just said no rep without within their own font, I'm sure they'd be fine. Yeah. Well, no, no rep of barrel could sue for that. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but also, I, I, I mean, I, the the question of like parody comes in as well because if it's yeah. if it's yeah. a if it's a you know noble that's a CrossFit thing and you're doing a no rep like you know mm -hmm. joke on play on words on it, that is more or less the definition of parody. So it's very odd that. Anyway, it's it's yeah. all right, you know. Let's poor, poor noble. Let's leave them alone. They, you know, they need the money. Yeah, I, and yeah. I even saw some responses that it was like, well, at least they're trying. And I was like, okay, well, we're not going to really I'm, pull I'm ourselves up it. by our bootstraps by at least they're trying. But I'm sure. gonna pull out. I'm gonna pull out the elephant in the room here. Oh, noble dear. go. Noble don't give a toss about CrossFit. Noble are using CrossFit in the same way as oh. Whoop are using CrossFit. And Rogue. In the same way as and every, yeah, in the same way as Rogue used CrossFit, in the same way as everybody else is using CrossFit to get popular enough to, to branch out into it. other brands. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Noble will be bigger in cycling soon than they will be in CrossFit. What, 100%. Well, it was the same. 100%. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's all. You pat my and then, back, and then and then this but, is all academic because Noble will just do whatever they want. Yeah, you know. I mean, Re Reebok I, Reebok brought CrossFit to the place that it is now. Really, like no one, no one, not no one knew about CrossFit. Obviously, CrossFit is a good method. The, the CrossFit Games. Let's re let's rephrase that. Then Noble Reebok brought the CrossFit Games to where it is now. I, in my opinion, it's, and it's CBS one of the biggest, and, yeah, and CBS yeah, and ESPN. Certainly, and now it's yeah. Noble and YouTube. Well, yeah, it's their but own you cast wouldn't, on YouTube. Would CrossFit, like would, have, YouTube. would CrossFit have got any of those things without Reebok? Did CBS and ESPN come before Reebok? But also Reebok, Reebok were revitalized by CrossFit. Yes. Because they yeah. were... They helped they each were, other. Reebok yeah. still, I mean, fourth or fifth now. I don't I don't know. Aren't they owned by Adidas now, I think? Yeah. Um, but like... Yeah, I could I could see a scenario, but that's even sort of it's eating itself now that we're only getting CrossFit created brands to sponsor CrossFit things like like Monster. 
Well, oh, okay. <laughs> doesn't it? Favorite. But then doesn't that draw us back to? But Monster don't care if athletes are popping. Why do they care? They're bigger everywhere else. You know, yeah, but, Monster... other, but other brands would care, right? If you yeah. had, yeah. yeah. If you had, like, if Nike sponsored if, it, if they would the, care. If the yeah. repu, if your reputation is, I think Monster would care because someone like me would start going, hey, they started drinking Monster Hydro and then they popped. <laughs> you do you do the maths <laughs> well that was an interesting thing with especially certain athletes is that they had brands that they were sponsored by and you saw them try to not say yeah my the, the supplement supplements company that, because that me. <laughs> you are supposed to be only taking certain supplements from a certain company that pays yeah. you to say that mm -hmm. um, so it's obviously usually i use my supplements that are the best and that's... just one day at the gym i'd forgotten my bag and i borrowed some supplements from a friend of mine and because they were not these supplements that are the best but you... that's probably why i popped so there we go um but you cycled off reason of to in buy... march yeah well, yeah, of course, there's always that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, but it, it is interesting. I, 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 it's another thing that I've been thinking a lot about is that idea of it's, yeah, it's sort of like, you know, CrossFit knew you before you were famous and then mm -hmm. you, you start. And, and I think it speaks to the makeup of a large portion of the kind of CrossFit community that kind of are people that have that expendable income that do go out and buy these these products and then maybe are working in industries you know if, if you've got that kind of money perhaps you've also got a, a job that you know means that if people see you kind of walking around in these right. noble shoes and they ask questions about them and then it's sort of the you know it's not just the athletes at the games but i think if you've got all these people that do crossfit that run out and buy everything that they're told to buy it spreads the word a lot quicker right and then they start to embed into other other areas and then all they need is a little contract with a bigger company and that's already now more of a priority than their contract with crossfit right that is maybe a bigger contract for crossfit but comparatively it's very small compared to like a little contract with a massive sporting organization yeah and they don't have to go talk to crossfit i mean reeboks literally sponsoring athletes to wear their shoes against likely crossfit's wishes right now like they're gonna go pay yeah. athletes to win in all of these shoes. yeah all these people yeah i could say like, I, I anyone could do anyone could do that i could say yeah. if you i don't know pretty, if you wear sure if, uh, sam said if you wear a plate snack chat t-shirt and you win an event at the crossfit games yeah you get a you could do that at the semi yeah yeah, yeah. You no it'd be better to do it it would be better to do it at the games we could put that out there we could get a lot of buzz around it like if anyone wins a an event at the games wearing plate stack chat plate stack chat apparel we will give them 10 million dollars and i'm fairly wow. confident that no one at the games could actually get hold of any plate stack <laughs> chat apparel yeah. so we'd be fine wow. but think of the buzz yeah oh uh, i did look a little at that the rules for the uniforms are pretty clean cut that shoes is really one of the only exceptions i think grips bandana <laughs> oh bandana maybe a uh, grips and sunglasses was the two places i sort of saw that there might be a wedge somebody could drive there oh, sunglasses um, and the event is a swim <laughs> yeah or, or i guess maybe goggles yeah, uh, yeah. like like tear could get in there in some place or like victory grips or one of those baseball cap that... I don't know. I think they lock that down pretty. You've got to be allowed yeah, to wear something. Know. If you're expected to, to to perform outside in the sun, like they've got to allow. You I know, suppose you, you yeah, but they've got a um the the noble well noble baseball cap, and they've oh, got true. the noble um. Oh, well, mm -hmm. the stupid hat there. Mom. The stupid. Oh, like the the circle yeah. one. I know the one. I you don't mean. know what it's called. Got like a bucket hat type thing. Yeah. Yeah, bucket hat. Uh, yeah, but uh. I mean, yeah, I think you could get in there a little bit, but I don't know that you'd be giving out Reebok money. You might be giving out like some free more grips for you. If here's you a, in the grips. Here's, uh, here's, what, here's what you can buy. Out. So I guarantee, well, I guess what you can't wear is a swim cap because you can buy one of those, a headband, a crossbody bag, 
Uh, what else have we got? That's not just they deck them out. Yeah, uh, a rock sack. Unless they do, obviously, a rock run. Sot. A boonie hat. What we're calling it. Uh, yeah, but obviously, like booty shorts, trainers, that stuff. But yeah, obviously, you can wear your own trainers. They're not going to make you wear. Yeah. No, yeah. I guess they can't make. But Reebok used to make you wear Reebok, Reebok shoes, didn't they? They did, that yeah. Was, that yeah, was the... that's right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a great spot that Reebok can do that, but I, they have to like be be able to just say like, well, we figure Tia is going to win this many events, and she's we're not going to have to pay her out, and yeah. then it's a good job. Rich Froning never wears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like oh, oh crossfit right. mayhem folks yeah they're the ones that probably have to they have to pay out the most to but they also the nice thing there is they're doing it for adaptive and teens and masters for all of all of those like i think i don't know if, who was on lauren cleo show with brent but um but i think they pay more to those groups than they do to the elite athletes yeah yeah, also because they have um I mean you've only got you've only got five in like in in a division, for example, like the adaptive. Mm-hmm. You've only got oh, five. Yeah, people. there was more last year, I guess. They shrunk that down a little bit. So if you've only got five athletes, like your chance of winning an event is one in five compared to yeah. one in forty. <laughs> so that's that's pretty good odds, right? Like Yeah. 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 Snatch snatch up those shoes as best you can. Uh yeah. Uh, now you have to win and you have to be wearing the shoes and i would think there's probably and you have reebok to be able to prove it that... probably reebok are just imagining that crossfit are not going to show any of this on the live stream so you've got no oh, way to yeah, prove you have to prove it that you were wearing yeah. those <laughs> sorry we never saw it we never saw it so, so here's, the, here's the interesting so get here's the, mom, is the get your mom to take your picture before you go out there and then you here's my interesting sort of sort of sick mind Oh there. So uh, no, no. It, I think this is a legit question. Adaptive athletes. Oh well. You see where I'm going here? Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. they can't must, wear shoes, a, is that going to be exactly? That was my. That was going to be my question. There must be an adaptive division where lower limb. There is, is yeah. Uh, Seated lower limb. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. with and without waist. Yeah. Just um, tie them on. Tie them onto your chair yeah anything goes i mean i don't know i uh they did say this year the athletes had to register first you couldn't just throw them on for an event oh you really couldn't do a uh, luka jukic <laughs> yeah <laughs> gee I, I think did the same thing midway through he he threw on some shoes surely he's gonna be uh oh, is it? Well, well, i think he's it? a well this is the the odd part of between shoes and apparel and everything else that i was trying to figure out is i think he's a Again, I'm just learning how to say this. Yeah. A tier athlete? Yeah, he is. Um, so I think, th- and they're also releasing shoes. So I would think they're probably grabbing up all the athletes. I would almost wonder that Reebok doesn't mind so much because then they have to pay out less money, but still get to advertise like anybody could win this. Well, Velna used to be Reebok, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now he's, he's now tier. tier. Obviously, Mohero. Uh, Bukowski must still be Reebok. He is. He was on. But- the morning chalk up video, I but saw. his thing, uh, realistically, like Velna's thing is not to win every event, right? Obviously, he'd love to, but he's the professor, so he sort of comes at the right place in every event. For the... I mean, obviously, if you could yeah, win every was... event, then that would be the ideal scenario. But yeah, if you're the professor, heard, if you win every event, event you, probably win. Win. Yeah, you probably win. Yeah, <laughs> if you that's win, my... if you're going to win every event, you probably want to be. Sponsored that's my by best Reebok Brian Friend impersonation. Right? Is is that's my level of analytics. <laughs> Okay, this is interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, oh man, so many. Adams is Reebok. She is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I swear she could. She, uh... She's likely to win a couple. Is she? Any uh, endurance running? <sighs> yeah. I, uh... Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you've got uh, like she's she is good at all of that, but so is Tia. Like it, it's mm-hmm. it's like what you. So so I was talking to um to Craig earlier. We were talking about like this team that's going to Madrid. That's um 
uh, Elliot Simmons and Alex Smith and um, Jamie. And then he was saying, oh, I think it's Laura Horvath. And I was like, no, I think it's Danny Spiegel. And, and it was like, oh, it was Danny. And I was saying, and it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because like the stuff that Danny's really good, like she's got that kind of top end strength on a lot of those things. But that's also stuff that Laura's really good at. So it's so I was like, unless there's like a a, a handstand, you know, deficit hands, strict handstand push up workout, you're probably going to want Laura <laughs> to to be on your team because the stuff that Danny would win, Laura is also probably going to do really well at. And mm-hmm. then she's also really good at all the other stuff that that Danny's maybe not good at. And I think like with Haley, it's a similar thing, right? Like she's so like a long chipper, you know, w- when it's like start with a hundred, a hundred GHDs, she's like, oh, so it's like a, a warm up for mayhem. Brilliant. We'll do that. Yeah. When time, other so, athletes yeah. like their midline blowing up after the first sort of 25 and she's just still smiling. Um, but yeah, I don't know if she's so much better at that stuff compared to to tia if that makes sense but she yeah or compared to mal or compared to it's it's definitely yeah. watered the strengths last are watered year, down last yeah. year she, she tier won 11 of 15 but yeah. realistically she's only got four that she's possibly gonna win anyway and and of those she didn't um Haley didn't win any no because what was it like the handstand walk one that, that uh, daniel brandon won so it's like again a very sort of specialist skill like you're you know, you're fa- if you're faster on your hands, you're faster on your hands, right? Like you can, they're all very proficient on their hands, but some people are faster on their hands than we are on our feet. Like that's the problem. Um, yeah, anyway. I mean, Haley's is mostly the events that look like they're just going to beat the crap out of you. Yeah. It's like, she she, it. yeah, she which, but I, I, I hope she's going to do well. Now, we didn't speak about teams. Um, I think the team shirt thing is a, a travesty. That's, I think that's ridiculous. An absolute outrage. Um, I, I really, you know, we don't have time for it now, but definitely, definitely expect something to come from me soon about teams because um, I have a theory that nobody cares about teams. They only care about individuals. And you know that, that... because they talk about Rich's team and Annie's team, Annie's team. and they don't actually talk about Reykjavik or... Uh, mayhem that much mayhem more so than Reykjavik but that's what they speak about and I foresee let me know if you think this is crazy I see two parallels to Tia Claire Toomey within the team's like event this year okay two different parallels and one is obviously Tia going to the games as the you know de facto we were already you know we've already printed the shirt with the additional win on it because we know that no one in this field has a chance to beat you and i feel like that's mayhem right they've got that they're going there with yeah it's you've already got win. this right yeah. we yeah. know you're going to win this and the other tier parallel that i think is even more interesting is tier finished second at the games and next year was completely ignored, like in all the lead up to the games and everything. And it was all about Sarah and oh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, she's gonna. And then Sarah, you know, did pretty badly at the games and tier one. And everyone had sort of slept on that of like, oh, well, we weren't really paying attention to this person. And I would say Oslo is, you know, finished second mm-hmm. at the games last year, won their semi final, winning every single event as well. Uh, a really good team and nobody cares. No one is talking about them because everyone is talking about Annie and Reykjavik and, and that team. So I, yeah. I, super teams. Yeah. I, think that's I mean, well, they, are they a super team? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it, oh, the comparison I thought you're going to is, can Mal upset Tia and can Reykjavik or I guess Oslo upset Mayhem who are both going after things that no one's done. I mean, this would be Rich's 10th win total. Mm. So, which obviously nobody's done. And then, and he's even talked about retiring already. And then Tia's sixth, which nobody's done. And you'd wonder what she does after that. But if Mal or somebody like Laura comes in and shakes it up or, Reykjavik or Oslo comes in and shakes Invictus. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, Invictus, another team that have done again. So they didn't your, have you, your theory is not far off. People don't talk about teams. And yeah, my no, no. my so, information about teams is fairly shallow. So, well, Invictus finished second in the quarterfinals. They mm-hmm. won their semifinal. Their win was not as dominant as so. Th- so, you know, I do have to admit that Reykjavik did win their semifinal as well, mm-hmm. winning every they event. They swept it, right? So, yeah. So, Mayhem, Reykjavik, and Oslo, all three of yeah. them finished with the maximum points available. Yeah. Um, so you know that's interesting. That's that's there's some interesting data that can be mm-hmm. can be taken there. But though I watched the video today, the like mayhem versus the world. You didn't mention the world. They didn't mention the world at all. They mentioned one team, Iceland. <laughs> yeah. So I was mm. very. Um, but Rich did mention Oslo. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, he, he's not he, stupid. He's rich. Yeah, yeah. one he, of the cleverest men. They, 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 they said like he said, "Oh, do you feel?" They said something like to him, "Do you like feel like any team's a threat?" And he said, oh, "I think every team has the potential to be a threat, like at any moment." And and then he specifically mentioned, you know, like Oslo. They you know they did really well last year. They're they're pretty fit. So I was like, "There you go." He's paying attention. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, I I want to pick up um. I just Miller obviously doesn't watch our podcast or listen to our podcast. Oh, uh, might, he, he knows Mike's on. Or maybe, maybe. Well, he he said something on one of his videos, like, "Oh, I'm not sure if anyone said this before. I'm pretty sure they haven't. I haven't seen it anywhere." Um, this conspiracy over uh, all the the whole thing about Matt not training with Tia anymore, and the oh, fact yeah, that yeah. Matt is now training Mal, and obviously Matt trained with Tia for ages. I definitely. Just saying. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that one. I mean, it's it's fun. It's a fun idea. Like that he's think, building, he's building he, this he's this person that can beat his somewhat rival. I think there was some conversation between Hiller and Savon that touched on that Matt didn't like that T was already be call, being called the most dominant when they both have five titles. So. It all so feeds Bri- into that idea. That Brian Friend really gets... stirred the pot too much, and now this yeah. is Matt's reaction. Is to... <laughs> I mean, well, didn't Dave Castro? Dave Castro dropped Dave, the bomb. Dave didn't he? said it. Yeah, well, yeah Dave, Dave said it. Yeah. Dave said, said it originally, the... and then yeah, Brian Dave, Dave like, said it, and then Brian said, "Let me go and find all the stats. Let me prove that for you, Dave." Yeah, the stats are easily found. By the way, yeah. like she yeah. has the most points ever. She went wire to wire last year. These are both things from last year she um i think she has the most wins of any person not oh yeah man or woman she yeah so like those are all easy easy but like oh, I have to oh, the um, media show up just in time for us to close out the episode it's <laughs> um but uh but yeah i mean and then everybody wants this fun idea that it all gets spoiled somehow but you don't really want to just see mayhem and tia and justin win again but if you're if, if vegas ever made this actually a sport and put bets on it you would see those three at the top mm. Mm. okay I only see. someone were making some form of bet. no idea right. only well there we go i said we wouldn't talk about teams we still managed to do it we've we've crammed a lot in but i feel it is um I feel you know what it is. It's Clyde Sell have turned up. I, they've been doing a lot of live streams these days. I'm feeling feeling quite self conscious. I think it's time to end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I well, I have to end it now. Or... On the comment side. So I'd rather I don't know. How this <gasps> oh, went. now he's thrown it out. Oh, I've just you've just put it up. Sorry, Justin. Scott's win. put Justin won't mm-hmm. win. Oh damn. It... <sighs> Clydesdale and Savon podcast can go head to head on that conversation. I won't. Sheesh. Yeah, I I think the the most accurate statement I've heard is like because you know Savan will talk about Justin like he he compares her to Tia. He's like she's like Tia. She's got he's got it locked up, mm-hmm. and I would say he is definitely maybe one of the favorites to win, but is in a nut like Tia is in a league of her own when it comes to somebody you're like this person is going to win right like 
she's just so good at everything and yeah and, and i'm like, more interested i'm more interested out, in the no men's side than the women's tia. side and I, yeah. I don't want that to be taken the wrong way but it's just more interesting to me tia's gonna win yeah but that's she it's, doesn't it's i think flipped, she's right it what? is completely flipped from like a few years yeah. ago where you know, when Matt you go and... into Sunday and Matt had it locked up and you're like, oh, as long as he does the minimum work requirement on the next two workouts, he's won. And yeah, it's like smile halfway through the last event. And, you know, yeah. like, and, and it's the same thing now. But with the women's division, it's like, oh, who's going to get second? That's an interesting thing to see. Um, if I was Tia and I won this year and it's like I've done six, no one's done that. Absolutely. She should just do a seventh because just what you're doing. Well, yeah, what you're doing there is now whoever like now it's a year later before anyone can even start chipping away at then having to try and win seven. And all yeah, you need so is no one, one person so to interrupt yeah. that run. So know. realistically, the only person at that point who is going to get someone. anywhere close is going to be Mal. Because yeah, she's got statistically, enough time. Nobody, yeah, nobody else has enough years in the sport left, arguably, than, yeah. yeah. And even and then, like these guys are starting like late read aren't they i suppose if you're the average sort of male peaks at Starting what, 20, late i mean is that 27 i don't know i love how yeah, do you think footballers, footballers right? retire football yeah. like footballers retire at like i do love cross it's 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 a well, great i'm thing. 39 by the way so i i should i'm i'm hoping to get better results just going to the 40 year old masters here next year um everyone forgets Henry Carey. Yeah. Uh, uh, as far as rookies go, mine, it, uh, mine that I'm going for is Alexis Raptus, which is, I think she'll do better than oh, that. That's a that's a tough statement, but I'll put it out there. I think she'll do better than Mal. Yeah. My my big question is all well. Mal's young, but not a rookie. My my yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my question is goes, young can... on the next gen. That yeah, like sorry. Oh, because I was going to ask if we're allowed to count Roman Krennikov as a rookie, seeing as he's never actually been to the games in person. Um, a rookie without a without a written, <laughs> yeah <laughs> any results. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's um, yeah, yeah it, it's interesting. Tyler's <laughs> oh. popping in with "Don't steal my pick," helping. Oh, mm. how dare you have the same pick as somebody else? Yeah. You guys have been looking at the same spreadsheets. Stop it. <laughs> We've compared a lot of notes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'll stop giving stuff away here at the end of the podcast. Yeah. Well, what we do now is we'll we'll switch this off, and then we'll get all the secret stuff afterwards, and then we'll churn that out later as our own content. Source, yeah. <laughs> I'll be away. like an anonymous source told me this, and people are like, oh, hold on a second. Then you have Mike on the podcast the other day. I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> Why? Why does maybe that matter? Not. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for like, I mean, you want to talk about, we, we, we mentioned that like Scott turned up right at the end. He managed to make up in the comment section for turning up late because it's just eight, nine, just nine comments in a row. That's how, that's how you do it. Oh, so uh, we, we okay. should start, we should start doing podiums for who comments the most. Uh, no, no, it'll be in here in no time then. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're doing t-shirts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he's saying Saxon. Saxon's gonna take wow. it. Then Dallin. Oh, he's giving us his podium pick. Everyone, hold on. We have a what? we have an exclusive a, a Clydesdale Media exclusive. Oh <gasps> not a Saxon chance. taking cannot, first, Dallin second, cannot. and Justin third. I cannot get behind that. So that Saxon for me old. is um when we talk about training camps oh this is a third podcast starting now when we talk about training camps saxon is the person i'm most interested to see because um i haven't like and actually i you know i'm kind of not really on board with the whole training camp thing anyway uh, but when we were talking about the professionalization of the sport and you know how much money people are having to spend out and things like that that is where i think you see the purpose of these training camps mm -hmm. is that you can pull resources but saxon's move to proven is interesting because like proven you know they get tier every year so yeah they've got this you know they've got first place at the games locked up every year but she was doing that before proven was it a training you know mm -hmm. camp 
right? So seeing what Saxon can do, because he's always been good, but will he now be great? That's um that'll be interesting. <laughs> Scott's putting Scott's Scott's in the comments with that's my Savar no research oh. and just spewing pick. Wow. <laughs> okay, and look at this. Justin wins. Pilot Tyler said office moment. These texts cost me ten cents a piece. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Um all yeah, right. uh, I don't know that I. But then we I, appreciate I, them all the more. Um, yeah, Tyler. I the 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 camps are interesting because mayhem just wins it by volume. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay, that is actually a topic. We, we let's put yeah, a pin I in could, that I next week. Going, you need to stop me. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I I've oh we we've got to talk that we we did speak about and we can't a long time around, ago with with Brian when he was it. on, but um. We'll leave that so people, if you want to know our thoughts on training camps, come back. Who knows? Maybe next week if we remember. <laughs> Maybe not. Mike will be in the comments. He'll be um, chipping in with all his hot takes at 10 cent a piece. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Only thought. that paid 10 cents a piece. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Uh, maybe talk to CrossFit, see if you can monetize mm -hmm. it somehow. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mike. It's been lovely to actually like hear your voice and see see the man behind a lot of Instagram posts and um, and spreadsheets. Thank you, Sam. All right. Appreciate I was you. happy to be on with a really sexy thirty nine year old. Just saying. Oh, look at that. There he is. In the garage. There he yeah. is. Well, we're all we're all masters athletes on this podcast, so uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We're, we're old men now. Our career is over. <laughs> right. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone, that chipped in in the comments. Thank you for the people that have now downloaded this after the fact and put up with us despite the fact that we did that. Thank you to my daughter that's just walked into the room as we're wrapping this up. So that's convenient timing. <laughs> and um, we'll see you all next week, I guess. Thanks again, Mike and Sam. Mm -hmm. You can. Thanks, no worries. Thank you very much. If you want to follow Jason on socials at Jason CF Media. Uh, if you want to follow Mike, it is at 80 is the word, number 8 MPH. Is that is that the best way to say it? That's probably the best way to say it for people who can't see it. 88 miles per hour. Yeah. 88 miles yeah. per hour. If you work it out. I'm at La Roche Original. The, the podcast is plate.stack.chat on Instagram. Press like, press subscribe, download it all, all that stuff on Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast. Thanks very much, and we will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>